for that. He wants you to find that. And part of you finding your life word and part of you finding who you are in Christ means that you learn what it means to live fully alive. Fully alive doesn't mean fully alive doesn't mean fully perfect. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing if fully alive meant fully perfect? Yeah. But look at your neighbor and just, just look at them with the realization that they're not perfect and neither are you. Amen. But God is into moving through. Somebody say through. through. He's into moving through, say it again, through, through. imperfect vessels yes. so that He can get perfect results. Yes. How in the world does that work that He works through imperfect vessels but yet He gets perfect results? The only way that that works is for us to really adopt and grab a hold of um, you know, the Scripture that really talks about obeying and how obeying is it's much better to obey than it is to sacrifice. Can you say yeah? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What it really means is there are people that, that obey. I, I have three kids in the room. One of them breaks something. How many know that, you know, sometimes it takes a while for the, the guilty culprit to fess up to it, correct? Yes. And then sometimes there's the one culprit that leads everybody else into it. And, uh, and you can spend all day in my house trying to find out who the guilty party is. And by the way, the older that they get, you would like to believe that the older that, especially the girls get, the less trouble they cause you. Can I just shoot that one right in the head and just tell you? <laughs> I would tell you the the you know the older they get, the more uh, issues for opportunity and growth and victory you have in your personal life. If you live with them, that's a real nice way of saying they will drive you to they will take you to the limit. But all I really want from my children, the reason I brought children up is the only only thing I really want from them is I want their obedience. But before I can have their obedience, I want their heart. Yeah. Yes. And yes. so the only way that I get their heart, people are always talking about judgment. Is it judgment or judgment prophecies, you know, good for today? You know, is it hellfire and brimstone or is it not? Is it all I know is it's his goodness and his compassion and his mercy and his goodness that brought me to where he is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then my ability to continually, and this is what you got to catch, my ability to continually keep coming back to the altar of God with my life, submitted, fully obedient to Him, then that really determines my level of full victory as a prophetic believer. That's what, it, that's what determines my level of breakthrough. Are you with me? Yes. yes. In other words, my ability to continually be broken on the altar of God, to continually lay my life before the Lord in a broken, open way, that is what determines everything else in my life. If I will be obedient to be as Abraham did to take his Isaac up the mountain, right. even though I don't understand what's going to happen when I'm up there on the mountain, I don't know how there's going to be a sacrifice provided. I don't even understand it, but I know because I know my Father. Come on, somebody. I know His nature and His character. And I know if I'm faithful to take my Isaac to the altar, He'll be faithful to provide a ram in the thicket every time. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. There's a way of escape. Yes. But it's not just to escape to escape. It's literally a way of living that we adopt as citizens of heaven that wherever we go, we have opportunities to see miracles and we have opportunities to see breakthrough and we have opportunity to see it in a supernatural way and where we are not confined to just the four walls. We're not, just, we're not confined to whether we've been to Bible college or not. Whether or not we have the certificate on the wall or not, we're not confined to those things. How many love a faith that just bursts every border? Come on. Woo, your yes. love for God, your passion for God just explodes every border, every color barrier, yes. every denomination, yes. every language barrier. Come yes. on, somebody. Yes. Yes. Your love yeah. for God. 
your unbelievable passion for God, His kingdom, and everything that is kingdom, you take it with you, and you're not just David Hunter, guy on the back row, or guy that comes to Extreme Faith Church, New Iberia, but you are David Hunter, Dangerous Weapon. Somebody say hallelujah. You are, you are Neil Bertrand, Dangerous Weapon, yes. in the hands of a mighty warrior, and that mighty warrior's name is Jesus. Yes. And He's wanting to raise you up is that obedient sacrifice. He's wanting you to move into the more of God and He's wanting to release you as a child of promise where you're not just talking about revival 20 years down the line or 20 years back. You're not just talking about the move of God that may or may not come. But how many are ready for this? You are the move of God. Come on, yes. God. You are the move of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. When somebody needs that drink of water, I am that drink of water. Yes. When somebody needs that food, I am that food. When that child needs those shoes, I am that. Whatever it is in the moment that I can be that is kingdom, yes. I absolutely, I don't just embody it. Come on, somebody. Yes. But I am that in the moment because yes. I am, as a child of God, yes. I am all things 100% yes. kingdom. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So lift your hands to heaven right now. You're of, that's the big trade-off. Yes. You think you're of your mom and dad's sure DNA. You're of heaven's DNA. Yes, I am. You're not just a citizen of heaven, but you've got heaven's DNA yes, yes, on Lord. the inside of yes, you. Yes, Lord. So because you've got heaven's DNA on the inside of you, everything that you have, everything that you do now has greater purpose than it's ever had before. Glory to God. Every step that you make, somebody say amen. Yes. Amen. yes. Every step that you make has to have, it just does, because now you're a child of God. Now I'm not David Hunter, just David Hunter. I am David Hunter, child of God. Right. So every step I take has much more authority. Yes. Come on, has yes. much more meaning with it. Yes. Because I'm not just David Hunter, I'm David Hunter, son of God. Yes. And God wants you to carry with you that same authority. Yes. And He wants to bring you to that place of authority. And He wants to bring you to that place of release. And He wants to bring through you something that's amazing but He doesn't want it to cling to you. The prophetic, as you are a prophetic vessel, that which flows through you shouldn't ever cling to you. In other words, the reason God gives you your prophetic intuition and your ability to prophesy is so that you can just be like a mouthpiece for God. Yeah. It passes right through you, and then it's just clean again, ready for a new yeah. Ruach yeah. Word of God. Come on. Yeah. 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 There it is. Yeah. Spirit to spirit. Yeah. That's right. There. I love the things that are spirit to spirit. So I want to speak this over you today. I just I have some fun things I want to speak over you. And this is one of the things I wanted to speak. I wanted to speak light years. Light years. Quantum growth over everything that concerns you. I receive it, Lord. How many could receive that? I receive one? that. Especially in the arena of finances, because yes. that's the one that paralyzes everybody. Quantum growth in those in that area. Just stretch yes. your hands yes. to heaven. Light years. I, I just speak it. light years. Thank you, Jesus. Light years. Thank I speak promotion. Thank I you, speak Lord. for timely promotion. Thank you, Lord. I speak Thank timely you, relationships. Thank you, Jesus. I, I speak for a, a favor, supernatural favor over relationships. Uh, I speak uh, for a, I release a supernatural listening ear over those that have their hands lifted right now. Yes. Father, I say that there is an upgrade of favor, yes. release and wisdom that yes. is coming from yes. above, yes. but yes. it is being done as we, your children, yes. tune our ears yes. to what's going on in heaven. So Lord, we thank you for those divine setups, those divine encounters where we encounter someone else that has a need and we have that we have that answer for that need instant and in season. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you that every seed we have planted till now is bearing fruit. Lord, we say that it is seed and it is fruit of the harvest kind. It is not just Will it happen? It's not just potential, but it is absolute harvest. And there is not one thing lost 
Not one thing slips through the net. Not one thing is lost in this harvesting. But everything is gained. And someone lifted up a mighty shout and said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Glory. So, we really, we really, really, really found ourselves in a, in a place over the past, I don't know, it's been quite a, quite a week or quite a two weeks for about a 10 day, uh, about a 10 day period. Um, and forgive me if I'm a little off on the times, but I'm going to just tell you what happened and, and then I'm going to, uh, not only testify of what happened, but I'm going to tell you about the goodness of the Lord. Um, many of you know that we, uh, ordain and we credential, uh, people that have been in ministry for a long time, maybe they've been just kind of looking to find their identity, looking to find their place in full-time ministry. One of our ministries is that we have a heart for people that are looking to find who they are in full-time ministry. So we license, credential, walk them through the process, ordain them, so on and so forth. So uh, a few months ago, we had a kind of an incoming class with that incoming class was one of our really good friends, Pastor Milton. And uh, Milton is uh, Guatemalan. He lives here in Houston. And we've been doing full-time uh, missions with Milton now on a level that with Pastor Milton there in Guatemala now for, I guess, almost going on three years now. But uh, Pastor Milton is just one of the most dynamic men of God you'll ever meet. And if he heard me introduce him that way, he wouldn't even understand it or want to receive it, which is what makes him even better. He's a humble... How many like some humility? Yes. He's a very humble guy. He's a very humble leader. So uh, Milton had come up under us as someone we were training to pastor the, the work there in Wastatoya, Guatemala, which... A lot of people think about in terms of what we do in Belize, and they think that that's amazing, and it is, and we love it. But Central America is a lot more than Belize. Yeah. You know, Guatemala is quite a place. And uh, Guatemala, from the very first time, I want to, the first thing I want to say is there's no accident in prophecy. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. You need to learn how to speak to your situation. How many believe there's no accident in prophecies? Amen. So we had, it was the first time I had ever been to Guatemala, to this particular city. And they, as they always do, they have a tour that's set up for me to where I'm kind of touring around, figuring out kind of what my bearings are and what we may want to do in ministry in the city. And generally they'll have a politician or someone in the city that walks me around and tours me. And basically tells me, hey, this would be maybe let's look at this side or let's look here or let's look there. And uh, so we had been doing that and they had set up for us to be on a television show uh, there in the city. And I said yes to it, that I would do it. So when I said yes to this television show in the city, I had no idea except for I knew that the Lord was going to, I, well, there was a language barrier because I was going through an interpreter, although I understand Spanish, can speak Spanish. Generally on the shows, it's so fast and it's rapid fire, you want an interpreter. And so there was an interpreter for me. It was actually Pastor Milton. And it was on that show that I just started to direct, directly address the camera and the people at home. And I began to directly address the people that were in that building at that, or not, I'm sorry, that were watching that broadcast in that moment. So I started to address the people of the city, and I started to say that there was going to be a move of the Spirit of God that caused people to realize that the blessing of God was on Wastatoya, and that there was going to be this unbelievable blessing of God from heaven that was going to be on this city in Guatemala, and that all the prominent politicians and all the prominent people would look to this particular city as a place that has a new paradigm or a new way of doing things moving, moving future forward. And that God was just going to grow this city by leaps and bounds and do amazing things in this city 
and that there was going to be transformation in this city. Somebody say hallelujah, thank God for transformation. Hallelujah. So I just started speaking that directly to the TV camera, and we started to begin to speak and prophesy change to that area. Change started to happen, and God started to do things, and walls started to come down in the schools, and God started to do some amazing things, especially in the area of outreach. And we started to expand our, our horizons, and we started to go to the dumps and to the places nobody wanted to go to. And we started ministering to the kids that nobody wanted to minister to. And we started ministering to the folks and the families that people had forgotten about that were literally living in the trash heaps and the dumps of the world. And so as we started to do that, and we started to press in, to those places and as I had prophesied change and I had prophesied all this breakthrough which is really amazing on TV and I began to speak breakthrough over the mayor I began to speak breakthrough over all the civic branches the whole thing well what happened was God started to bless that city in an amazing way and we had our pastor on the ground pastor Milton there and we were just celebrating, some of you would remember by watching our Facebook photos, we were just celebrating the clearing of all our property in Guatemala. Isn't yeah. that awesome? Yes. There'll also be a receiving center for all new mothers. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah. So we'll be able to help young mothers, some of them uh, unwed. We're going to have a small little clinic there. We're also going to have a really dynamic, uh, smaller elderly home. We're going to have a home for children that have uh, been uh, that have been uh, suffered injury, uh, handicap, different uh, types of situations like that. We're going to have a home for those kids on our church property. So while Pastor Milton was clearing all that land and making roads where there weren't any roads and everything, that's when the uh, the volcano disaster happened. Right. And uh, and it was quite a thing. Uh, and any kind, any time there are disasters like that, there are so many different uh, layers to it. Uh, the first layer was uh, that you would think that people are ready for something, but you would learn that in a third world country like that, that their systems and their ability to get the word out and warn. Is quite uh, it's it's quite difficult. It is very very hard. And uh, so when we first got the information, we heard the same numbers everybody else was hearing. We were hearing things like 1.7 million people affected by the volcanic eruption. We were hearing 3,000 people evacuated. These are all numbers y'all probably heard. Right. We were hearing 200 missing approximately a hundred dead yeah and uh, and you want to believe those numbers for a lot of reasons so uh, when we uh, you know we got we started to get the pictures Milton started to send me the pictures of just the ash that had accumulated somewhere around 70 miles from the epicenter just the ash that was on all their stuff in the driveway and at the ministry center was unbelievably <coughs> thick and these guys were working out in that I knew then we had, a, you know, that there were some things to look into. Then we started to get some reports. Pastor Milton and I and Gina, we all met in Houston. We had a kind of a board meeting. And in this board meeting, as we were sitting in this board meeting, uh, we were talking about the, the eruption. But again, we still didn't all know the fullness. Pastor Milton was still filling us in on exactly what they had just done on the ground. But he was still trying to get the details about this eruption just as we were. And so within, you know, it was within easily within 24 hours. And I'm going to build your faith because some of you, you may feel like God is telling you to do something. But you say, well, I'll do it when the Lord provides it. I want to build your faith. How many could use a provisional uh faith builder right now just lift yeah. your hands yeah there are all kinds of things that happen and then there are things that we have to have some divine uh interaction with the lord on and as we started to get the numbers uh instantly i woke up and i thought there's got to be an issue here because they were talking in terms of one jet 
they were talking about uh, flying uh, Pastor Milton and myself in this one particular jet. So I wasn't seeing all the body of work you normally see with a commercial type flight. And so I, I called the number on the thing and we found out that just based on someone having a heart for what God was doing in regard to this tragedy, that they had picked one ministry uh, from the states that they trusted more than any other ministry to do the work of the kingdom there as it involved the volcanoes. And it was uh, our ministry, Extreme Faith. And they said, we're going to fly Pastor David and, and Pastor Milton, so load up this jet plane. We're going we're gonna to pay for it. It's all done. And so that was an amazing thing. Can you say hallelujah? Yeah. hallelujah. We were able to go... We were able to go fully loaded with as much stuff as we could possibly take. Uh, everything from over-the-counter pain relievers to baby food to you name it. We were able to take up lotions, balms, all, gauze, medical supplies, all kinds of stuff. And so when we landed, we went back to Wasatoya because that's where our church and where our, our center is. Already... Uh, just, I will tell you one thing that's going on, and this should make you just praise the Lord. Uh, extreme faith, and that's our ministry. We already, we already have a program going on on the ground where we, the displaced and the people that lost everything that have no homes, we're actually, we already have, we're building full homes for the people that have been displaced. And so, if you go on, you'll see. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Yeah. So, obviously, you can't fly with bricks and you can't fly with martyr. But we were able to fly over. And because we were able to fly in, uh, we didn't have to deal with customs the way everybody else would. Customs generally wants to charge everybody tax or something like that. When we got there with all our supplies, they just said, Come on, Pastor David, we've been waiting on you. And, oh, by the way, all this by the by the uh, president of Guatemala. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yes. So when I'm in the air on, on my way there, the president, his delegation, and then our mayoral friend that, remember I spoke over his city, they're all at one big party. Guess who they're, they're at a party with? They're at a party with the Israelis because Guatemala was the first to stand with the U.S. when... We recognize Jerusalem. Come on, how many understand? Yeah. Guatemala was the next nation right in line to say yes. So the delegation of the Jewish delegation was there from Israel, and they were having a big party. So I knew God was up to something. And so we landed there, and our goal was to bring relief to people. And uh, we had really less, this is absolutely true, we had less than 72 hours we had no budget for anything. We certainly didn't have a budget to be able to fly our supplies over in a private plane. We had no budget on the ground. And the Lord, just by His amazing, what He does, the Lord was amazingly benevolent enough. I think we were able to buy somewhere around between thirteen dollars and $14,000 worth of just food and supplies for the people that were affected by this disaster. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And we just, we took on, we said we wanted to adopt 200 families. So we provided groceries and relief for another 200 families. Not only that, we're also building uh, homes for the displaced. Not only that, <clears throat> but every bit of water and every bit of food that we bring into Guatemala, we take it directly because of our connections with the government. We take it directly to the most in need people. We don't just take it to one drop off place and say hope for the best. Yeah. But I don't do that. What I do is I actually go in with the stuff and I talk to the moms and I talk to the people that are running the shelter and I get an idea of what's going on and how we can help. And I believe that's being a good steward. Can you say amen? Yes, yeah. amen. And so the next thing is, um, you know, we have a really. Uh, Interesting life, you know, when you know, when you have the favor and the blessing of, of certain people and, and the right people politically, then you, I don't know if you would call it favor or if you would just call it, if you would call it being at the right place at the right time or 
just being where God wants you when He needs you there. But we we uh, begin to press through. We begin to give all the bags of groceries away to the people that were in what I would consider to be makeshift shelters. And as we started to give the groceries away to the families, we started to press toward where the volcanic activity was, where Fuego still is, where it's absolutely still active, where it's still got plumes of smoke rising up from it, and they're praying and they're saying, God, don't let it, you know, don't let it blow. There's another one that's also teetering. Both of those are teetering. Most people don't understand, but some people don't even know Guatemala has one active volcano, much less that it has 27 different volcanoes. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So as we started to get closer to the site, um, we things started to get more intense, and there was an ambulance. I noticed an ambulance. Now we were pressing past places where nobody's allowed to go. And there was an ambulance, and I saw on it that it was from Houston, which really made me excited. And then I saw the ambulance turn around, and we kept going. And that's when I knew that what I was going to see on the next side of the, the lines, I knew I was going to see some stuff that was going to change me forever. And it, and it did. When I got off, when I got out of the... Uh, when I got out of the vehicle, I just thought I was landing, I just thought I was setting my feet on uh, mud or whatever. And so I just said, oh, a little bit, seems like there's a little bit of ash. And I started to walk around, and as I was walking around, um, of course, I put on my, my mask because the, the smell was beyond toxic. It was beyond anything I've ever smelled in my life. I wouldn't know how to describe it to you except for uh, from what everybody tells me it's the same smell that you would smell that guys that have been in war and guys that have been in death and combat zones encounter and it's an overwhelming thing and as we were standing out it just looked like literally like the surface of the moon yeah. and uh, I you know I was just in shock because there wasn't a living thing there wasn't a living thing except for myself, my team, and and that was it. I mean, and the shock in the face of the, the in the faces of the policemen, the shock that we would even be there or that we would even be standing there, they were completely shocked. And the only way we were able to do that is because we had bodyguards and protection because it's just so incredibly dangerous you just can't even imagine it. And it's danger on a whole nother level. It's danger on a whole nother level. And I started to realize that where I was was uh, somewhere I, it was something I'd never experienced before. The heat that was coming off uh, the, the active volcano, which is Fuego, was amazing. There was just an ira there was a radiating heat. It's the only way I can put it. The ground was literally almost like a active in the sense that you could feel almost like a heat coming up from the ground if that makes any sense whatsoever um, and I looked to my left when I looked to my left I just saw the top of it looked like just the floor and then Pastor Milton said that was a school and I realized that at that point that school had been completely buried completely buried under it was no more there was a park it was no more. It was under 50 foot of lava, debris, volcanic ash. And, and then came the really sobering moment, or moments, where I turned to my left and Milton said, this is a, a family. They're just looking for the bones or the remains of five children that were here. Only, only because they're under... 40 to 50 foot of debris, lava, ash, you name it. And we here in America, you know, our big problem is whether we're going to eat it out back or whether we're going to do, you know, Ruth's Chris. And over there, they're literally taking their babies and they're babies. They're real babies. And they're putting them into whatever bag they can find just so that they can give their children a proper burial. And so from there, 
we knew that we cut everything. We cut our cameras, all pictures, everything. Because at that point, we were really dealing with some really heavy stuff. And there was a family off to us. It was an entire family that had been buried. And if I told you how deep they were, all I could tell you is they were in a crater that was this deep looking up at me where those tiles are. And these guys had been digging and they had dug almost about the circumference of this room, just feverishly digging for their family. And the idea is that they won't, that they won't and also understand it's an active volcano. It's an active situation, so you can't come in with excavation equipment and a big crew because you run a risk with that crew. So they were already caught off guard. They can't be caught off guard again. Now they've got to be smart. So there's no excavation. These are just family members trying to get family members out. And it was at that moment that I saw some of the most heartbreaking stuff I've ever encountered in my life. Uh, there were grown men, bodyguards, that are some of the toughest in that country. Some of the absolute toughest men on earth, really, for what they do. And they just, we all just stood. And it wasn't who was tough at that moment. It was just men were breaking down like little babies and weeping because of the stuff that we were seeing. And, and it was just one of those situations that you walk away from it and you say, my God, not only are we blessed, but we are, we are truly blessed because there are people tonight that as a result of that tragedy, they still, their breathing is still affected by it because it's so, you just can't imagine the stench and you can't imagine just the, just the fumes. You can't imagine the death. And, and so that as we were standing, what I thought were, we were just standing walking around in this one area and then I realized it was a city of 68,000 people that had been completely buried, wiped off the map with no warning. So now you're, now you're tracking with me. Now you're getting a, an a idea. The 3,000 that they evacuated were tourists. Those were people from Canada, Sweden, Switzerland, Germany. They evacuated their tourists and they got their tourists out. And so uh, the people that were left were people that didn't get a proper warning. So there were no mass evacuations. There was never a run on a store like we would have here in hurricane season. We'd have a run on Sam's or Walmart to where the shelves would be empty. Didn't work that way. They didn't get a proper warning. So what you have is you have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are buried tonight and it's just one gigantic graveyard of people that don't exist anymore. And the only people who do exist are the refugees and the people that are fleeing. And it's a very shocking thing to only be able to help the people that you can help. As much as the heartbreak is on the death and the suffering side, you can only deal with the people that are in front of you. And so that's exactly what we did. We started to unload the truck and we started to get those supplies to those families. And I can tell you, and I believe this deserves a big praise God right now. Because I can tell you, before you praise Him, you need to know what we're praising Him for. Because there's a moment that we start to deliver food and supplies. And as we were giving food, as we were giving food and supplies out, it was on that moment, at that moment, that I realized that on planet Earth, on planet Earth, there was no other ministry doing what we were doing on planet Earth at that moment like we were doing it right there. And God trusted us enough to take those supplies to those people. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. Isn't that amazing? Thank you, Lord. So my phone started ringing off the hook. I started getting all kinds of really cool phone calls from people, people that are excited, people that want to help, people that have big hearts. We came back with an overwhelming need for food and water. We have an overwhelming need for food and water. Uh, right now, we're doing everything we can do to get them food and water. Uh, I'm working with ministries like James Robinson. How many know who James and Betty Robinson are? I'm working with them in Life Today. Uh, also working with uh, Benny Hinn, contacted our office. 
We're working with them. We're strategizing how to get water and food, the non-perishables. We were also contacted um, by Franklin Graham's ministry, Samaritan's Purse, and so on and so forth, so that we can see what supplies that we can get down there. Uh, but our biggest initiative right now, it's water and it's food. And we just, the people there are amazing. We love them. Uh, Pastor Milton is actually going to be coming through. We're going to have him. How many would love to hear some of his yes. testimonies on a yes. Sunday? Wouldn't yes. that be awesome? Yes. We're going to have him really soon. But these are real people, and they're people that are really, really suffering. And I want to just say that, um, you know, as, as we're giving and as we're sowing, number one, there's tithe, there's offering. Um, this is the storehouse for many of you that you get fed at. And that's tithe. But then there's offering. And today, and for as long as we can, every offering we take is going to the people that have been affected by the volcano, by the volcano Fuego. And everything that we do, we're going to be... And, and this is another thing. We're going to be able to get all the supplies to the other side of the line. I can't tell you how many supply trucks I saw stop when ours just kept on going. I can't tell you, well, I can tell you, we went as far as you can humanly go. And I can also tell you, you don't know, you don't know what it means to shake a little bit inside till you feel a volcano rumble when you're still at the base of it. It's pretty interesting stuff. So as you give, as you give an offering today, maybe you just want to say, I want to give toward water. And I don't know how much water I can do, but, you know, Pastor David, you know, I want to sow towards water. Or I want to sow towards food. You know, whatever it is. Um, and however it is you give. Otherwise, tithe, praise God. You know, we, we, we tithe and we give. One, of Gina, one way that Gina and I tithe and give is we tithe and give. And we feel like the Lord tells us every Sunday to just tithe in to the area. And we tithe in. And we just go ahead and take care of the entire facility. And we love that. And we love we love being how many love being able to worship here? Isn't it an yeah. awesome thing? Yeah. Yes. So just quickly, I have to read this scripture to you. But before I read it, I want you to put one hand on your heart. We'll lift one hand to heaven. Because I want to read this over you. And I, then I'm going to begin to prophesy over some people, speak a little bit. This is first first Corinthians chapter three. And it says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of the flesh, to babes in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food. For you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you are not yet able. For you are still fleshly. For <laughs> since there is a jealousy and a strife among you, and you are not fleshly and are you not walking like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another says, I'm of Apollos, are you not mere men? What then is Apollos, and what is Paul? Servants through whom you believe, even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one. I planted Apollos, and I watered, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants, nor the one who waters is anything, but it's God who causes the growth. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. Everybody say fellow workers. Fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. And according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building upon it. But let each man be careful of how he builds upon it. You know, just stretch to heaven right now. It's not, just, it's not just the investment you make, it's who you are in the kingdom. It's who you are in the kingdom and God is causing your stature to rise. He is raising your stature. It's not just about 
men anymore. It's not for the quote unquote famous prophets to do and nobody else. It's not just for the famous evangelists anymore or the famous pastors anymore. Now it's about you and me and the body of Christ. Come on, fully maturing. Come on, somebody. Not just satisfied on the milk. Come on. Yeah. Not just satisfied on the manna of yesterday. Amen. But moving forward. Maturing in, in Him. So that we're not of one man or another. But it's that same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Come on. That same Spirit that quickens our mortal bodies. To where we're not just mere men and mere women anymore. But we are supernatural Children yeah. of the Most High. Come on. Yeah. Doing kingdom work wherever we go. Somebody yeah. lift up a shout. Hallelujah. Lift up a better shout than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So it's all this that we do in Jesus' name. So as, you, as you're giving today, I want you to be praying with us. We're about to worship. I'm about to prophesy a little bit. But as you're giving today, just understand... We're literally working things out today and tomorrow and Tuesday. My children would love to have at least one day, but they said, we'll wait till Tuesday, Dad. Because I have a meeting on Tuesday with all these different ministries, and our goal is going to be how can we get water in, and how can we continually be getting water in, and how can we continually be getting the food in. And by the way, for uh, just so you can understand on the digging of the wells, James Robinson would love to help me dig wells, but that won't help us right now because we have literally, just before we can even get started, we've got 50 foot, sometimes 45, almost 55, 60 foot sometimes of debris and ash before we could drill or before we could do anything. So we just need that on the ground. And so, so if you're giving an offering today, that's what you're giving that toward. If you're tithing, amazing. And then everybody say July. Uh, everybody say July 13th through 15th. July 13th through 15th. Say it like you're excited about it. July 13th. All right. So the 13th through the 15th, we're going to have uh, Douglas Simmers and Jacqueline Hatley. And Doug and Jacqueline are awesome. They're a father daughter father daughter combo. Jacqueline is probably one of the best young worship leaders I've ever heard. She's amazingly anointed. She can also prophesy, move, and word of knowledge. She's amazing. Douglas, her dad, was one of the founding pastors of the Vineyard Movement uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, and is just an amazing power gift guy. And they're going to flow in the gifts, and that's going to be July the 15th through uh, the... Or, I'm sorry, the 13th through the 15th. Then I'm super excited because... Uh, July the 17th, I'm sorry, July the 27th through the 29th, Todd Bentley is going to be here. And uh, so we're going to have to see what we can do with this room and maybe the next one. But uh, we're going to have three days that are going to be great there. And then all that as we continue, uh, I'll be jumping back and forth from here to Guatemala. So you'll see me there a little bit during the week. But y'all be praying for me because right now what we need more than uh, anything is wisdom. Because we're right out on the edge and the Lord's saying, hey, I trust you to help. So we're literally taking everything we have and we're, uh, we're literally the ones opening the door in Central America so that the people that need it get what they need. Right. And I think that's a pretty amazing thing. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Isn't yeah. it amazing to have yeah. a church and to have a ministry right here in this place in the world but tonight to be entrusted to help people get what they need in Central America. And you say, well, but I wish it was me. I'm telling you, if you went with me, you'd see the smiles, you'd hear the stories, and, uh, and it's part of our, we're laying up those treasures in heaven. Amen? Yes. Amen. So let's just take a few moments. and uh, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you're doing, everything that you're accomplishing. Everything you're accomplishing. Hallelujah. So what I want you to do is just take the seed and just... Uh, 
hold it to the sky because it's really it belongs to him it's not just EFI or you know it's not just it's not David Hunter it's not Gina Hunter it's not extreme faith it's not even extreme faith New Iberia right now it belongs to him so I want you to stretch it to heaven right now crowning going on. Speaking of royalty, if that, if that resonates with you, I want you to stand. If you're a lady and that resonates with you, I want you to stand and lift your hands to heaven. There's a crowning going on.
Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court than thousands elsewhere. I want you to reach to heaven right now. And Neil, let's just take that basket and let's just put it on the where the Bible is. We pray for multiplication. We pray for multiplication. Yes, Lord. Right there, that basket can sit. over families and over people today. I want you to take the hand of the person next to you. And I want you to just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let your love shine down. this over you right now stretch to heaven father I speak supernatural timing yes. I release the timing of God on everything yes Lord not just in one area or another not just in one area or another but the timing of God all over everything somebody say hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. I release supernatural timing. Now, Lord, I pray that the doors would begin to open up. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. Doors that no man can shut. Yes, Father. Doors that no man can shut. And I want to speak to this lady right here, right there. Just stretch your hands right there. I speak to those three doors that I'm seeing in the Spirit. And the Lord says, in this hour, the Lord says, I'm breathing on you courage. And I'm giving you the ability to go through not just the one, not just the second place, but the third. Because... Your heart has been one that said, Lord, I don't want to just do it halfway. I don't want to just do one, two, and leave out the three. But the Lord says, no, I'm going to move with you. And on that third step, He says, I'm going to cause a breath to come upon you from heaven. That's the breath of the bridegroom upon you. And it's going to cause things to come to life. And it's going to cause wells 
to begin to spring forth and it's going to cause things that have been barren to begin to come forth and the Lord says barrenness is broken off of you now and in the volume and to, to the degree of the number of three I release resurrection life over you right now come forth come forth somebody say hallelujah come forth come forth just stretch those hands to heaven right now Father we bless you whoa Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord also saying that there's a grouping of decisions. Just you might want to just stretch to heaven for this. But there's a grouping of decisions. Now I can specifically say who this is before. Four, but the person I'm speaking to right now knows it absolutely by the Spirit. You'll drive away and say, that's exactly what I'm faced with. A grouping of decisions and based on what you do and based on the decisions that you make, it's literally going to determine the outcome of the next fiscal year, but the fiscal year to follow that. And the Lord says right now, He is breathing, breathing the breath of Yeshua upon those matters right now. In Jesus' name, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Breathing upon those matters. Breathing upon those matters. Better is one day in your courts. Better thousands of swears better is a one day in your courts better is a one day in your house better is a one day in your courts thousands 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 better is a one day in your courts better is a one day in your house better you to find somebody you didn't come in with just look around just join maybe two three people somebody you didn't necessarily come in with but you just feel like the Lord's saying I want to I want to pray through you come on I want to pray through you I want to flow through there it is Oh 
be still my love. Father, begin to just breathe upon those bones. Begin to breathe upon those dry things. So they will come to life again. Begin to come where there is impossibility. All you see is possibility. Where things look like they can't be done. All you see is something that can be done. Where something looks like it's over. You say it's not over. It's not even begun. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you're working all things together. All things together for our good. 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 
all things together for our good. Can you say hallelujah? All things together for our good. Come on, somebody. Let's just lift up a praise to him. We worship you. 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 Now let's just begin to just praise him. Don't hold anything back. Let's just begin to just worship him, Lord. We worship him. We glorify you. We love 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 you. Somebody lift up a mighty shout today. Hallelujah. I want to. I want to also. Uh, I want to thank Neil for covering on Wednesday night. He did an awesome job on Wednesday. Thank you, bro. And for those that don't know, everybody say this Wednesday. We have been having an amazing time of just teaching. It's all prophetic. It's all revelatory. It's school the prophets type stuff. If you want to come Wednesday, 7 p.m., be here. Uh, also, uh, don't let me get out the door without first shaking your hand, hugging everybody's neck. I love you guys so, so very much. Thanks, everybody, for praying us, getting us home. Uh, again, uh, the 13th through 15th, Douglas and Jacqueline are going to be with us. Uh, that's going to be like the arrows, like a warrior's fistful of arrows weekend. Then, uh, then Todd Bentley is going to be here the 27th through the 29th. And on those meetings right there alone, uh, I'm sure we're going to have a really full house here. And I'm pretty sure we'll probably fill that next area up. So let's stand today. And uh, I want to really, 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 really give you all time to just love one another. And I, again, I want to hug on everybody, get to see everybody. And I want to speak a blessing. Yes, and for those, thank you, thank you, thank you. For those that uh, come on Wednesday, won't the meeting is not in here. We're in another awesome room that we have for for teaching, and it's more classroom style. It's amazing. How many how many would love to go to a school of the spirit? Right. Well, the stuff that we are teaching on Wednesday nights, it's cutting edge. It's awesome. The folks that have been coming back and the feedback we've been getting, has, it's just been really, really, really great. So, again, thanks to Sierra and Tiffany for helping us with our children. And uh, so let's stretch one more time. Father, I speak a blessing over every household, over every head of every house right now. I just release a priestly blessing. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you that there is the blood of the Lamb that's been applied to the doorpost of the homes. And God, that, that nothing evil can come nigh our dwelling. No yes. sickness, Amen. Amen. no foreign invader can come into our habitat of the glory because the blood is on the doorpost. So Father, we thank you. Father, I thank you for angelic protection. Yes. And I also thank you for an infusion of spiritual wisdom this week. Yes. For every believer under the sound of my voice. Yes. We say it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 I love everybody. We'll see you soon. See